Good morning, everyone. My name is Kara Sherpa, and I was an SOS participant for eight years. And this summer, I'm happy to be interning at SOS Outreach as their summer alumni relations intern. We're thrilled to be here with Bobby Murphy. Bobby, can you please tell us about yourself and how you are involved at SOS? Yeah, well, um, gosh, I guess it's been already about five years or so. Um, I've been part of SOS as a board member, but even prior to that, um, have been the ski school to help support SOS. And uh, yeah, a little bit of background, I guess, about myself. Um, you know, I, I grew up as a city kid from Chicago, I actually started skiing at, at Wilmot, one of the mountains where we have uh, FO, SOS uh, currently, and, uh, and really grew up skiing every once in a while on the weekends, really wasn't into to skiing as a as a as a passion until I got into college and started teaching skiing at a little resort in the Midwest, and that was really what what you know uh, I guess created the passion and the interest in helping others get better at skiing or snowboarding um, on the mountains. So uh, that transitioned to um, me changing my major actually in college, and uh, and in doing so, brought me out west. And I uh, was uh, at a few amazing resorts in Colorado, uh, spent some time in Crested Butte uh, initially, taught skiing there, became a manager and supervisor within the Ski and Snowboard School at Crested Butte, uh, transitioned after 10 years to a little amazing mountain community called Telluride, um, was there for seven years and was the ski school director there for a major portion of that time, but really had the fortune and opportunity back in 2008 to be hired by Vail Resorts and moved to Keystone, um, actually Breckenridge, and worked at Keystone and spent a couple years there at Keystone, ultimately transitioning to Vail Mountain for seven years as the ski school director and skier services director and VP at Vail Mountain and worked very closely with Seth and SOS. And that's really where I think my passion really developed into the support and, and focus around getting kids that normally wouldn't have the opportunity to participate in a sport and, 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 have, and, and create and try to ignite some of that passion that I felt as a kid into others in a community where, shoot, I feel like everybody should be skiing, especially in the Vail Valley, right? Between mm -hmm. and all of those amazing mountains. So, um, yeah, most recently in the last three years, I've been at Stowe Mountain Resort, definitely working on trying to get SOS branched out into to our region in the east and working with Seth and the board on that and, and uh, obviously, you know, opportunity in the future. But uh, I think currently really excited about the support that I can provide even from the east coast to a, a more of a kind of Rocky Mountain centric focused um, organization, but really trying to do what I can to help continue to drive the organization. So. I'm um, really excited to, to be here in, in, in the Northeast with my family. Uh, we have two daughters that are 13 and 16. And yeah, I look to continue to, to help support the organization and, and uh, move us forward. The first question I have for you today is, how did you navigate high school and the uncertainty of what to do after? Yeah, so, so high school was interesting. You know, I, like I said, I grew up in Chicago. So I grew up in an area where skiing and, and winter sports really was just kind of an afterthought or maybe it was like hey we don't have anything going on this weekend let's drive an hour or so up to wisconsin and, and strap on the skis i grew up playing hockey so it's like mm -hmm. sports were fun but never like the core of what i was about and i think you know i think after even during high school and even after high school when i got into college i didn't really know what i wanted to do i, I really wasn't sure i didn't really have a passion kind of started in the business school at the university of iowa Again, not the mecca of skiing in, in, in snow, um, but it did get me close enough to a little resort on the on the Illinois Iowa border on the bluffs of the Mississippi, a little place called Chestnut that provided me um, some weekend opportunities to teach skiing to people. And I think that's where it really flipped the switch for me, where I could transition kind of that that background for me in sports and athletics and a little bit of coaching and teaching as a as a kid, kind of growing up in in that environment with my dad as kind of somebody I looked up to as a coach. And, and, and uh, I think in college, having that opportunity to teach on the weekends then got me motivated. I was like, okay, this, this could be something that I could really be good at or focus on or, or it provided me a path, I guess, to follow. And so, yeah, I changed my major, I think my sophomore year um, from business to more focused around recreation and recreation management and uh, ultimately graduated from the U University of Iowa 
with a degree focused on recreation business. Also a lot of work done around professional ski instructors of America and my certifications and kind of married the two school and, and teaching on snow into an internship out west in Crested Butte. So that's really good. what got me out to Colorado. Spent, like I said, 26 years in Colorado from that one internship from college. But I really didn't know what I wanted to do like right after high school or even getting into college until I found kind of this, this avenue. The second question I have is what tools in life do you use every day to ensure success? Yeah, I think, well, I, I, I really fall back on and focus on my values. And, and I'm very fortunate to work for a company that my values align with the company values around integrity and doing right, really having fun. I mean, we, we work in a really cool environment and uh, I've definitely been known to have fun in my career, but also kind of growing up. So, I, you know, that that's an important value of mine. But I think the tools of understanding that I've got a passion for this business and to be able to drive the business and have that integrity behind doing right and, and doing good for the for the environment at the same time really aligns with what what our company's about. So I think, you know, tool wise, I think, you know, I wake up every day with that passion and, and focus around those values and, and falling back on my values. I think work ethic in general, you know, I, you know when I, I get out of bed, I, I'm excited. You know, my purpose is truly to, to um, use my passion for the mountain experience to help others either experience it mm -hmm. or help my team lead in an industry that I'm passionate about. So I fall back on kind of my purpose, my values, and those are kind of my core tools. I mean, you know, like tactically, you know, I love my snowboard. I guess those are like the, the real tools that I'm on, my office, my, my systems. Uh, but the reality is I really fall back on kind of my core values of family, integrity, doing right, doing good for the community being involved in the community and, and helping support. And a lot of times, uh, those that don't have the opportunity maybe to be, be in our sport or participate in our sport. And another question I have for you is, how did you navigate your career after college? Yeah, I kind of talked a little bit about that um, with mm -hmm. figuring out my, my, my path through an internship. Um, I think that that was the, the best tool or, or, or kind of navigation for me was like college set me up in a way that I could follow my path through an internship. So, but some, sometimes it's tough because like, you know, that last semester of college, the internship didn't, didn't pay really anything. I, I had to work side and, and support myself while I was doing that internship. Um, but it was such a valuable experience that set me up for success in those, those coming years. So I think that helped me navigate it. Um, also, you know, being away from home was tough. So really falling back on building relationships and, and friendships in a community, in a small community in Colorado that, you know, did, that I didn't know, um, I think was something that helped my navigation was like being away from home, getting to know people in the community, reaching out and really understanding uh, the community through relationship building was, was important to me. Um, but tough, you know, at first, I think the other piece of this too, is I was you know, moving into a, to an industry that was very seasonal that could keep me whole in the summer when a lot of my passion was for the winter and finding that second season was, was a challenge early on. I think today, in today's world, there's, there's more opportunities in the summer for our businesses than there were back, I think, 20 years ago when I was working through that season to season. Um, challenge. And just to give you a little insight on our alumni network initiative, we're also hoping to provide internships and job opportunities with the outdoor industry through the connections that we have. Love it. Yeah. I'll tell you, that's, that's what got me to where I am today. I mean, I, I, I think of all of the people that, I've, that have mentored me or helped me along the way. And I, I think that initial internship really, it's, it's so, it's like priceless, you know, it's, it's like, it, it got me, it got me in the door. I get the foot in the door. And so I look forward to helping support that within our company or even here at Stowe possibly in the future. So that's awesome to hear. And the final question I have for you today is as the vice president and general manager of Stowe Mountain Resort, what personal approaches have you applied as you lead the conversation about tackling diversity, equity, and inclusion in the industry? Yeah, I, I think, yeah, I, I mentioned a little bit about how I look personally for ways to introduce the sport to people that normally wouldn't have the opportunity. But I, I think, you know, 
where I really, I almost, I feel like failed as a leader, as I look back on, on the years of opportunity is like, have I turned a blind eye for opportunities for, for people in the past that I could have leaned into? Or have I been complacent around things I've heard or comments people have made about people that are, are may look different or, or you know, have a different background or may have not, may not have the opportunity. And I think, you know, more recently, I've really done some soul searching and said, you know, am I ignoring some of those comments or some of the items that, you know, the things that come up in conversation in our industry, which are not okay. And as a result of ignoring it, have I basically said that that's okay? You know, I, I think I, I, I've reflected over the last definitely handful of months, given the environment we're in today, <clears throat> but even over the last couple of years of, could, have, could I have done more? And I think everybody has the opportunity to do more. But I think in particular, to your point in your question around leadership, I think I have, and all of us do, but I personally have an opportunity to take a more direct stance around inclusion and promoting diversity in an industry that just frankly is not diverse and, and we need to do a better job. I need to do a better job. And um, yeah, I see it, you know, in, in especially in, in the East in particular is that there's there's many different, you know, ethnicity groups that, that come to ski our resorts that may, you may not see in the West. And so what are we doing as a resort to help, you know, break down the barriers of, you know, as, as a different ethnicity group to the winter sports environment, uh, are we breaking down some of those barriers or, or are those barriers still there? And so I think me personally as a leader, I'm looking currently around what, what are those barriers and am I doing my part with our team here at Stowe and is our, our whole resort looking at it differently than maybe we have in the past to try to break down some of those barriers. So it's kind of a long-winded <laughs> answer, but something that I just free, frankly am very passionate about, and especially in, in the recent months and in, in, in years, um, have kind of done some soul searching around. So thanks for letting me share some of those those thoughts. Well, thank you, Bobby, for sharing your thoughtful remarks about what's happening and your initiatives on how to proceed. Mm -hmm. And also, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to go ahead and do this interview today with us. And I think that's going to be it for us today. Awesome. Thanks, Kara.